I want to thank the National TA Center for Children's Mental Health and the uh, Transitions RTC for uh, convening this meeting. Uh, I want to thank particularly NIDER, our partner for almost 30 years in supporting rehabilitation research training centers for people with mental health disabilities. I want to thank you, the presenters and participants. Um, uh, contributing to this meeting for taking your time. A special thanks to our SAMHSA staff as well who've joined us here today. Uh, particular thanks to the leadership of Diane Sonheimer uh, for her outstanding leadership. Thank you, Diane. Uh, topic of, of this meeting, uh, state of the science, education, and employment outcomes for young adults is one that certainly for myself uh, hits home. And as uh, in my introduction notes, I'm a person who self-identifies as an uh, individual in recovery. And uh, for me, the young adult years were the most important times, frankly, in my life, and the changing point in my life. And for many of us, um, after a childhood of trauma, of uh, dealing with criminal justice, addictions, mental health disabilities. I found myself as a young adult in my early 20s in a college in North Philadelphia and at my worst time in my life. A time where uh, I couldn't get out of bed for days at a time. Where uh, I wouldn't interact with my peers, I would hide in the stairwells instead of being a uh, talking to the students, not saying a word during semesters at a time. And my life, I thought at that point, wasn't worth living. So I made a decision that I was going to end it. I found myself on the uh, Broad Street subway platform and uh, ready to take that step. Um, as I saw the light coming down the tunnel and the rumble of the trains, something pulled me back. And that was my mom, the thought of my mom. And um, uh, my heroine of my life, and a, a woman who uh, knew mental health issues very well, was institutionalized in, uh, during younger parts of her life, subject to the evidence-based practices of the day, mm -hmm. insulin shock treatment. Mm -hmm. But went on to uh, raise four kids in poverty, went on to get a master's degree in philosophy, was a nationally published poet and social activist in her own life. Uh, she passed away last year, and uh, God rest her soul. But the um, thought of her pulled me from that platform, and I made a decision there that um, I was going to uh, try to get some help. So I went to the counseling center at the, at the college campus. They said, I told them what was going on. They said, come back in a month. We have an opening day. <laughs> But what I found there changed my life, and that was a sign. It was a sign on the door for a job. And it was for a work-study job of uh, working on uh, manning an information and referral phone for a local mental health program. And frankly, I found my calling. I found what employment brings to people, a purpose, uh, a purpose in life and a life of purpose. And... Um, through that experience, I also found two other things. One is that um, I wasn't alone with what I was going through and being able to uh, uh, talk to folks in the community who were experiencing what I was. Um, and then secondly, I found that uh, by helping other people, you help yourself. And that concept of what that does to your own self-worth and self-esteem. And I uh, went on and... Um, dedicated my life back to, to working in mental health. I want to say, uh, again, uh, the particular, so the importance of jobs, the importance of family supports is crucial for young adults as it is for all of us. Um, just to note a couple of data points here, as we know, for people with psychiatric disabilities, some of the lowest rates of employment of any disability group, those who are employed earn on average $16,000 less per year than their counterparts who do not have a diagnosis. I've heard it said that empowerment is a good paycheck at the end of the week. And that uh, the importance of 
um, in our in our uh, report here that you all have. Uh, again, just to note a couple other data points here about the importance of the topic. You folks know this, this data very well, but again, 30% of young adults have a mental health problem in the past year. Two and a half million have an issue so serious that it impacts their ability to function. Young people are more likely to experience homelessness, be arrested, drop out of school, be unemployed. The greatest disability within this age group is mental health disorders. Almost a quarter have experienced four or more types of potential traumatic events. Four or more, one quarter. Almost a half felt they did not have an adult to whom they could talk about important things. Ten have had a, a tenth, one in ten, experienced a period of homelessness. Sixteen percent, neither in school or employed. Ten percent have made a suicide attempt. A quarter have been arrested. 12% with a serious substance abuse problem. Say just a word or two again about in employment, and that is that we have it backwards when it comes to psychiatric disabilities and employment in this country. That we don't have to become less symptomatic before returning to work, that work reduces our symptoms. It provides that sense of purpose and belonging. It gives us opportunity to contribute to shared goals. Along those lines, I also want to say that our work is even more difficult today than it was a week ago. Experiences of the uh, Navy Yard shootings just downtown D.C. here, just a few miles from us. Obviously, last December as well, with the horrible shootings in Newtown, Connecticut, the names of Adam Lanza and Aaron Alexis just uh, give further burden to the lives of those of us with psychiatric disabilities. And that uh, scarlet letter has gotten even worse. And what this means, particularly for social inclusion, what it means for us about employment opportunities, when the kind of fear that these kind of incidents can produce, and what can we do as a community to try to address those issues in the days, weeks, years to come, frankly, is a, a huge issue for us. Part of this also is the culture of diminished expectations for people and young adults with mental health problems. We have to recognize that a diagnosis does not have to become a destiny, as my friend Russell Pierce has said. That we are not doomed to a life less, less than health, less enjoyment, less money, less status. That we have to break the Prozac ceiling when it comes to employment and mental health. I'm going to end um, my remarks by, again, just relating my own personal experience. Um, when I started at SAMHSA uh, almost 20 years ago, um, the then special assistant to the director of the center, Bernie Aarons, told me, um, and she told me this a few years later, that uh, she, uh, she was going to make it, as I started the job, her goal to take care of this mental patient that she saw come into work at the agency. She expected in her head, she told me someone coming in drooling and shuffling, not being able really to function on the job. Make it a, a long story short, three years later we were married. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 16 years later, um, we take care of each other. Uh, we have three beautiful children. and. Uh, uh, a home with a mortgage um, and two, uh, two dogs. So um, it's about, again, uh, recovery. Um, it's about keeping that, uh, that hope for, uh, for all of us and particularly for young adults. So thank you. I wish you the well in your meetings the next day or so.